Welcome once again to Gaming Under the Influence at Green Dragon CVR in Woodbridge, Ontario. I'm Hello. Mike, and this is Alex. We're here to talk to you once again about fucking video games. Fucking video games. Yeah, in our own way. <laughs> After a matter of speaking, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Talk about video games. <laughs> How you doing today, man? Pretty, uh, doing, doing pretty good. Yeah. Enjoying one of, this is actually one of the earlier beers that we had on the show, like, when we yep, first started. Yeah, I remember it's the can sitting on the yeah. table in, like, one of our first videos. Yeah. Right? yeah. Those were good times. The yeah. dry hop, sour. Fantastic. This is light. Four yes. percent. Yeah, yeah. Very sour, very nice. Yeah, Always delicious. good. Love, uh, love duplicitous. I'm drinking, uh, Bang Bang from fucking left field in Toronto. That's another good one. Another dry hop sour. Similar kind of thing. That one's a Goza, so it's got some coriander and salt. Mine does not. Noise. People say that kettle sours of these, of this variety, are uh, one note. You know, they're they're just fucking. Which one's the kettle sour? Yours or mine? Both. Oh, they both. Kettle are. sour oh, is okay. any sour they like sour it before they ferment it. Right. They sour it in the fucking pot. Then they boil it to kill the souring bacteria, lactobacillus uh-huh. and whatever else, and then they fucking ferment it. Whereas traditionally they made sours by like putting lactobacillus into the fermentation, so it was more volatile and it produced that like wine kind of type of shit, right? Oh, and it takes a lot longer. So people say these are like uh, fucking you know lowbrow, like one note, like yeah. it's not as complex, like fucking. You know what? I love I like simplicity. It. No, it's nice. Simplicity is a divine perfection. You bastards, you know? No reason you can't enjoy this yeah. and a more complex uh, variety. But just in speaking to the, uh, you know, supposed simplicity of it, like these two things are both kettle sours and that one has salt and coriander and it's mm-hmm. a different style of kettle sour yeah, altogether, yeah. right? And you want to take a look at the 50 different fruit ones we have. There's another case <laughs> to be made for that too. <laughs> yeah, it's great beer. So, uh, Lots Alex, of uh, these dudes are from Burlington. That's yeah, they are, man. Right. Yeah, saw it at the grocery stores here too. If you guys are from... Uh, Ontario, Anybody that's an local. interesting thing to note. So, we're officially at the end of January. Today's actually February the 1st, and I finally finished Control. Yes! Which is good. I know you finished it a little while ago, and yeah. you've been kind of... I guess uh, that was my game for January that I finished. Yeah? yeah. When did you, you finish it this year? I think I finished January? it in January, yeah. I'm pretty sure, after Christmas. Fuck yeah. I think. Don't I'll check. We both finished Control in January. Yeah, but it was and excellent. You, you've been dying to talk about it for a little while. Oh yeah, <laughs> I talked about it probably already 50 <laughs> yeah. different times, but... What a fucking interesting game it turned out to be. Eh? Yeah, it's beautiful, yeah. Like, just unlike anything, it, I, I feel like, I mean, how do you market f- what it is? Like, it just seems so underrated for anyone who hasn't played it. Like, it's, whatever you think of it, it's not that. Yeah, it's I not a, so. a what I thought was a generic run-of-the-mill yeah. third-person. Maybe with, shooter. like, a decent or a better, decent to, like, maybe a little bit better above-average story, right? That's that was my initial impressions of it, but fuck, once you really get into the, the meat and potatoes of it, it it's far exceeds that. It, it's, it's something, yeah. It, yeah, it really expands. I think though, what uh, separates Control from other you know third person shooters, which it mechanically resembles in very many mm-hmm. ways, you know, even you know down to things like the levitation and the throwing shit oh, and man. whatnot. Yeah, it's very much a third person shooter. Yeah. But, you know, just like how the, like, bland concrete surfaces of the oldest house conceal, like, fucking all the crazy shit going on behind the surface, like, fucking those gameplay mechanics are, I guess, like, the palette, like, the medium that Remedy uses to, you know, delve into this, like, genre, this literary genre of new weird, this, like, approach to, like... I don't want to say the supernatural because it evokes this image of like ghosts and stuff like that, but yeah. more like metaphysical realities, like super supranatural things, like what's more than human, like what's beyond sensible reality. Like the approach that Control takes to those things is, you know, Sam Wake says in this uh, interview conducted with IGN, you know, it's called uh, Sam Wake on Alan Wake 2, Control, etc. He says he uh, was inspired by the new weird genre in conceiving this game, right? Like this mm-hmm. approach to what's more than human not as like a terrifying like fucking tentacled like monster like in conventional weird fiction but more like a transcendental reality that people should aspire to you know like jesse says um at some point late in the game that she's in a you know a house uh, you know stretching into infinite dimensions and it's full of all kinds of horrors and stuff like that but mm-hmm. she's happy there she feels comfortable there like that's yeah that's very home, characteristic right? of the new weird genre of literature i guess and uh sam lake acknowledges in this interview with 22 27 you know he always liked weird and this approach was something they wanted to make a game about right and right. uh you know another thing about that kind of literature is that it's postmodern in its approach which means you know unlike postmodernism in philosophy and stuff like that like postmodern literature abandons like static 
or uh, fucking temporal narrative approaches in many cases you know it tells the story from different perspectives or with like different instead of a narrative like this happened this day you'll find like a note from somebody's journal and a newspaper okay, article yeah, it's yeah. like it's not a yeah, conventional a lot of games narrative have right stuff like yeah this yeah that they've, yeah, yeah sure but in literature though that was a fairly like in the history of literature a fairly recent mm-hmm. thing and yeah. sam lake says of this that you know postmodern literature and especially the new weird it's a literary genre made for analyzing almost like you're playing a game coming up with interpretations you know investing into it and therefore, and therefore getting more out of it, you know, based, mm-hmm. you know, there's like a proportionality between how much you put into a fucking understanding of the game and how satisfied yeah. you feel afterwards, yeah. right? He's trying to how say. How much you sort you of know? absorb from that, yeah. that experience yeah. you're, you're outputting, yeah. right? And he says these two things are the big things that were in his mind when he wrote this game, you know? Okay. This is a work of new weird and it's like there, postmodern this, and it's The game approach, is right? littered with yeah. fucking those radios, yeah. Yeah. the the folders that you pick up, like the yeah. audio logs, That's right. like yeah. just exactly. all yeah. kinds of yeah, yeah. shit if you... <laughs> It would take forever, but if you stopped and like read everything and like looked mm-hmm. into it, it like eats chunks of I think so too time, which is fine. But like it's it's just for to, sure yeah. just to say that it's like dense, right? There's there's a lot there's for a lot sure. that went into the creating. Of I think all so. Of this, and like right? building the, the world, yeah, yeah. There's so much shit there. You find out that it's really a sequel to Alan Wake if you fucking just look into the <laughs> literature they give you and shit like that. But it's also interesting that the story is presented in a fucking really like jarring way. Like you just kind of drop right into the middle of it. Yeah. And you find out if, who Jesse yeah. is and who Dylan is and what happened to them. Just like throw you right in. Yeah, there, kind yeah. of ad hoc. Like over the course of the game. And like I said last episode that I found this to be like, you know. For this reason, I don't really think control is a low concept work. It's not about hum- humans and relationships. Like Jesse and her brother are more like ciphers. Like she's almost like an Arthurian figure. You know, she finds her Excalibur in the form of that fucking gun, and she sets out to write her kingdom. Right, and Dylan's like <laughs> this fucking satanic like usurper. He even wants to like go into the fucking astral plane and fuck with the board. You know. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not some low key yeah. drama. Shit, no, it's not right? about like, Between oh man, <laughs> I really want to write my emotional relationship with Dylan, my brother. Stop Dylan. it. Dylan. <laughs> oh. It's really about I Dylan still don't being abused as a child and like huh, toxic. Huh? Yeah. No, it's I, not I like that. I still don't understand like what what happens to Dylan at the end. What he the like fuck I think is... the fucking hiss is like pushed out of him, but he's yeah. all fucked up. I'm but he's sure. just like yeah. almost like a vegetable. Like he's I just... think so. Yeah. Because sure. like the only the only times you they die. Yeah. The only times you hear him like speaking in the games when he's like screaming. Oh he's, yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. he's pretty much possessed, right? He's but like all fucked up. Everybody else, she got the hiss out of. They died. Remember at the beginning, they're like try and get it out of that person, and he just oh, fucking dies. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. And so okay, Dylan didn't die, true, but he's like right? yeah, fucking all zapped. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. he's all fucked. Yeah, yeah. And the hiss is still in the oldest house. I think like just like Jesse now, after that Hedron fucking device was destroyed, and Polaris was mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. Polaris told fucking Doctor, what's his name there? Dr. Uh, Castle Darling, Darling to yeah. uh, fucking build that device so that it could contact Jesse to bring her to the oldest house to fix Which all device? the shit. You know, the, the Hedron, the, uh, like, the big amplifier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One of those <laughs> days. The Hedron. Fuck. The hell were we talking about? What's it called? The head? The, oh, the yeah. That Hedron, Hedron thing. Yeah. The Hedron? Yeah. Hedron? That's why Polaris made him fucking build that thing so that it could contact Jesse. But How like, did they contact Jesse with that? Because it the like Hedron? amplifies fucking... He, like uh, Polaris like all of those fucking astral entities they need some like anchor some physical anchor in the world to interact with shit okay. in the world you know and that was fucking Polaris's but he the Hedron amplifier like enhanced it so that she could fucking talk to Jesse talk to Jesse so yeah. that's what Jesse yeah. was talking to throughout the game yeah Jesse like uh, it first contacted Jesse like through that slide projector you know right when they were kids though yeah. like a long time ago and, and it talked then... to her for a long time but then it went silent and then oh, she heard it again you know so um, it probably went silent because they took it into the oldest house and locked it up in the panopticon there. Okay. Throughout the game, when she hears voices in her head and shit, is that all from that too? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah that that's, spiral? Yeah, that's yeah. Polaris, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just at the beginning, the hiss tries to infect her mind, you know? Okay. And she fights it off. And then later, that section in the office, that the hiss does infect her mind. Because that fucking cube is destroyed, right? And right, then, right. Sh- then Polaris, like, instead of it using whatever the fuck, it uses her. So it lives in her now. Just like the hiss was inside of Dylan, you know? Right. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Fucked up game. Very That's deep. Sick. Yeah, yeah. She's like, uh, Polaris is supposed to be some kind of, like, separate substance, you know? And, like, the hiss is supposed to be, like... <laughs> the union shadow or like the devil you know yeah and the board is like that the father archetype or like god you know <laughs> it's a lot to unwrap definitely yeah. like you you could the the cool thing is like 
if you didn't care about any of that stuff, you could play the game and yeah, still enjoy it. Like, it, it, it's actually yeah. a, a fun game. Like, it's a well. Yeah, it's got a lot of well, spectacle to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's a well. Sections like that ashtray game. maze and like that. Yeah. There's a lot of like memorable things when you think yeah. about it. You know, that ashtray maze was fantastic. Yeah, it was cool. The yeah. Music going on and then those like specific uh, segments of enemies. Yeah. The one thing I would say. Um, I know there's a lot of hidden bosses that are optional. I think it would have been cool if there was maybe more bosses in the main, but they are there. They're just optional, right? They're mm-hmm. not. Uh, it's not part of the main course of the game. But mm-hmm. I guess at the same time, it doesn't like. I don't think it detracts too much mm-hmm. from it, right? Like you played more of the hidden bosses. I think I only did one, maybe, but. Oh, the hidden Would bosses, you, I think, think, add a lot to the game. That's what I'm saying. They shouldn't like, have been optional. Yeah. Okay, you don't think they no, should have been optional. You think, think they should so, have yeah. been incorporated yeah, into the game, Yeah, they added right? a lot. Yeah. To me, that, like, without that, it's kind of, like, Because flat, most people you will know? miss them, right? At, that's another, like, yeah. most people won't, unless they want to, you know, really yeah. play a lot of the game. And like, now that I beat it, I don't know if I'll go through all of the yeah. optional games. Yeah. I'll try some of them. But Do the one in the, in the, do the fridge one, I think, is the best one. Yeah? Yeah. The fridge boss? The rest are, like... Okay, but that one's really crazy. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe I'll go for that one. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really cool, and so it's you easy think to get it should to. Should have been part of the main campaign. Oh yeah, and I think that that boss specifically is like really important too to the yeah. story and everything else. Yeah, which huh. is really cool that you figured that out just from like looking at it for a second. You know. Yeah. Yeah, man, fucking remember we wrote that thing back in June last year. What makes a good boss battle? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. That's a good fucking thing. We should. Uh, Watch the Good video. point. <laughs> Boss battles are important, yeah. They're like the fucking peaks and valleys of the game, you know, I think. But yeah, that's the thing. I think they're like, important, yeah. Like, I don't mind that they made them, them optional, but... Maybe if it's not a boss battle necessarily, it should be something like a boss battle, like that section at the end with the intense fucking Yeah, it was hard. Or, the end of the game yeah. is fucking difficult. The problem is, though, through. when you get rid of a boss battle, you usually end up replacing it with just a ton of, like, trash mobs. That you yeah, have fucking, just a bunch of enemies. Yeah. yeah, that's why. Like, don't. Like, Which is equally as frustrating, or can yeah, be at yeah, least, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like if it's just easier to do for the developer. Yeah, yeah. If you uh, fucking see though some of the the optional bosses, uh, which one did you fight? I don't remember. Actually, I don't know. If... Which ones are there? Fucking, there's four. No, there's. You, uh, I think you originally said levitate was one, but that's not right. Oh no. Uh, um, so what's maybe it called? I didn't. Um, there's the mold, fucking this anchor thing. It's like this cube looking fucking entity. There's your doppelganger. Oh, no way. And there's this fucking crazy thing called Former, which is, like, probably, you know, something Former to do with the hiss. familiar, yeah. but I don't... He's got a big eye. Yeah? You talk to the, yeah, you would know that one for sure, yeah. That one I... Th- you know, you see that guy, and he's like, help me, I gotta look at this fridge, you know? At some point. If you go to, like, that, uh, the Panopticon checkpoint at the yeah, top, yeah. he's, like, right there, right next to it. I'm sure they did that on purpose, because it's a fairly difficult encounter if you, uh... Ah. Yeah. It's cool, though. Do it, yeah. Boss, It'll take you two yeah. seconds to yeah. do it. You just you go right there there's also another one where a guy's stuck in a room I don't know if that leads to with, anything I haven't gone back with to the that. fridge oh that is the one yeah, you're talking yeah, about where he's like the they're yeah. told me to stare at this yeah, bridge yeah, right yeah that's yeah. the one yeah <laughs> that's the one yeah how do you get into the room after though uh, you have to go back after you let Dylan out and that's it oh so yeah. I can go back now yeah oh cool yeah. yeah and the other one is pretty easy to find too but there's a lot of bullshit in between mold it's also pretty impressive it's uh-huh. this giant like fucking monster plant thing in the basement, you know? Shit. You know all those mold things and zombies you see around? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, It's yeah, like their source, yeah. yeah. That's why, like, so much shit seems like yeah, they like just that... don't resolve it without the boss. Like, the bosses are integral. The, f- the former guy seems like he's related to the wow. Hiss. He's pretty important. Okay, yeah. Either that or he's, like, an ex-board member or something. And the mold is, like, the cause of all those zombies. Which yeah, you don't know what the fuck until you see it. Yeah. In the and it's also an astral entity, you find out. Like, it's, hmm. like, an extra-dimensional mold. That's why it's so fucked up, right? Yeah, that's a weird decision, then, that yeah, they chose they don't, to, you don't to not... See it, yeah. To make basically make the bosses optional yeah. and then you do get significant rewards for doing them right oh like yeah you get you get like four get ability points, points yeah, and, yeah yeah you get a lot of shit and yeah. the the anchor one is pretty cool too it's in the black rock quarry it's a really weird alien looking like morphing cube like geometric object <laughs> so it's fucked fucking up. sick yeah <laughs> and one of them is like you your doppelganger she has like all your powers and really everything yeah and if you beat her you get this sick outfit it's cool nice yeah they're all cool they're pretty good yeah I, but again like what the fuck they don't <laughs> You know, why didn't they? Yeah, put him in the story. Did it even have a boss in the actual story? Just that fucking Salazar guy flying around, right? Like, yeah, there was. I was, I remember the levitate before he had levitate. I think there was like a type of boss. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember specifically. It's like a little fucking stuff, and there's a lot of different kinds of enemies. That's pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Yeah, you know? yeah. A lot of weird, like incomprehensible. Yeah, those the floaty yeah. ones that explode on yeah, you. Yeah, the, the wheelchair guys. Fucking, those are yeah, fucked, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are strange. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. 
Isn't there dogs too? Some dog looking things? I don't remember. It's good though. It's a that. great uh, Control is fucked up. Yeah, it's a great game. If you've never played it, it's fucking yeah, you definitely worth it. getting into. Check out that um that uh, interview I mentioned between IGN and uh, fucking um with Sam Lake? Yeah, it's Yeah, he probably clears yeah, things yeah. up a little bit. Very eh? cool, very cool. He said, you know, what distinguished the production of this game from Quantum Break was for Quantum Break, you know, the intention was to create, you know, quote a Hollywood action experience, mainstream sci fi. Right, which you know? just means bullshit. Yeah. Fast yeah. nine. Yeah. Yeah. For control, conversely, they said, let's not second guess, you know, will gamers get this? Let's make it as weird as we feel excited yeah. about, channel our passion and excitement and love for the project as much as possible. Sounds like really just doing it for themselves, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Uh, just yeah, whatever makes yeah. you yeah. fucking yeah. happy and excited. Like, yeah. That's fucking... He said, for me, from the creative side, like, designing the universe and story, that was that meant, you know, indulging in, like, the tropes of New Weird and Annihilation. But for Mikhail, the fucking designer, like, the systems and the gameplay, yeah. he said, you know, he could make it even more challenging for that reason, weirder. More effort required for the player to put in and derive a lot of fucking satisfaction from that. It could be hallucinatory and dreamlike, you know? Mm -hmm. It could be more like Souls gameplay wise, yeah. which mm -hmm. you obviously fucking like, man, it's a post Souls game. Like, it's so yeah. evident that, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> Save points. Yeah. And just for its own sake, it feels like, yeah, let's yeah. just do it like yeah. Souls. Yeah. Hey, it works, right? Yeah. The system works. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. they're going after. So, even though it's third person. Yeah. yeah. Specifically mentions Twin Peaks as an influence. And the fucking uh, interviewer, this, like, gnarly looking dude from IGN who's unpalatable he was one of the uncomfortable <laughs> ones for modern uh, warfare yeah. oh yeah. yeah that was good he says it's focused you know it's like a throwback game like an early 2000s game you know like almost being condescending like I felt and the guy's like yeah he says his mission statement was to get it done and to definitely be a throwback to those things you know like to those things that we loved about fucking older games right like yeah that was, that was why we made this game you know huh yeah that's pretty cool will we use cut, cut scenes like way less than before he said let's find a way to include action but still tell the story within that you know yeah i feel like we got weirder things in those like in the early 2000s yeah, and then we did we got experimental fucking yeah shit, right even right? Like, like like and that was even in like the film industry remember like all those weirdish movies that came out around that time yeah, even like sure. the late 90s and like yeah definitely they just experimented more with weird ideas right you they know it's cool though another interesting thing to note was like ideas Probably at that point in time. You know how now, like, if you play any third-person shooter, the controls are pretty much codified, like... Pretty much. Which is good in one sense, like, because sometimes, if that's not the case, there can be sloppy controls, yeah, but... It's, yeah, it's ideally the best way to achieve... Yeah, yeah, to make a right? game like, like that. Right, like, it's been standardized. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that also scares people away from unfamiliar control schemes and the concepts that come with them, or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas back in those days, like, there was no standard control scheme for most things, right? Yeah. And every game sort of... Had its own fight. Had did its, its own thing. Yeah. And sometimes you're Not like, the fuck like is this? Not like we're making yeah. a first-person shooter. It's going to be yeah. first-person yeah. shooter template yeah. fucking... Yeah. You so know? maybe that had something to do with Minor why... Variances, but why things were so fucking... They maybe, so yeah. There was more experimentation then, at least mechanically, from, yeah. from top to bottom, right? Like yeah. in the game and then with yeah, your input yeah, yeah, and... With, yeah. yeah like, All kinds of things, yeah. Yeah, that's true. It was cool, man. Not that experimental is always good, but like in this case, it definitely led to the making of some fucking seriously interesting games right yeah like, that's a control man i'm fucking glad to hear you finished that's a beautiful game yeah i love it I'm yeah fucking happy i did control yeah. was fucking unreal yeah, i think beautiful. i'm gonna hit jump back into star wars and because i'm probably a good like maybe halfway through that or something yeah, i want to sure. clean that up i, I want to kind of ease up sort of clean up a little bit on the backlog sure now that there's time right now that there's before shit gets out of hand like i don't want to start anything new yet I get that. Right? I feel like... We got some time in 2020 to burn yeah, through some stuff that have been lingering. Like you we said, do. if you want to finish Greedfall. And yeah, yeah, that's right. All there is this month is remasters of old things. So, yeah, yeah we, we... Which is fine. We're well served playing old things anyways. Yeah. Which, which is great, but... Yeah. yeah, it gives us time to clear yeah. it up. Yeah. There's some... Uh, I mean, there's been some light news. Some... Uh, officially, we're not, we're not getting a new Switch console this year, which surprising a little bit though eh? it's a little bit surprising because i'm it was probably last week or recently that i was saying 100 percent their nintendo is going to release a new console but if you think about it maybe that might be a stupid idea because you got ps5 and xbox coming out yeah. at the end of the year anyway so what are they going to do release a console with yeah and those two besides those guys, that's yeah. fucked right they'll probably wait until next year and then maybe early or mid, maybe late next year, they'll come out with a yeah. some variant of the Switch that'll be upgraded. They need they're they're gonna need, I think a minimum like a Switch that can output 
4K, and it might not even be for most of the games, but just just to bring it up to that point, mm. I th- I think that's what's gonna happen. It's only necessary. on like the docked side of things, right? To justify having it at all, probably. It's necessary. Yeah. So on the docked side of things, yeah. and then maybe with like a 1080p screen instead of a 720p screen, who knows, right? I'm just fucking guessing, but yeah, that's, they that some, would be good. They gotta have some kind of yeah, some kind of console coming up. I think up against uh, and that. I can't see them abandoning the Switch line. It's been so su- successful as of this point, yeah. right? Wonder if they would make a solely like a Switch. docked console. Oh, just like a like another home console. console? I don't yeah. know if they could do that though. Like Again. if they would make just a Switch Pro variety that you couldn't move, and it was just you know. that'd be interesting if they had like they have to have the Switch Lite that doesn't, and then to have one that is one hybrid and one that does one hybrid, and then one that's fucked. That's yeah. fucked up. I never yeah. thought of that. Yeah. The one that's like dedicated home. Oh God, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, yeah, I would, we'd have to buy them all. We'd have to buy. Like that. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> have one of each. Yeah. Fuck. The middle one. Nintendo's just now. killing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's actually another rumor that Mario Kart Nine is uh, coming out this year on the Switch. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I know you don't give a fuck about that. The I know. I know. Be. Um. I don't know. I'll let you know when I find out. <laughs> but Nintendo will let me know when they find out. <laughs> yeah. Too. It won't be much for you. Uh, isn't there already a Mario Kart on the Switch? Uh, you can yeah. have two on, yeah, the, on well, the same it's a, console? It's a port of eight, oh. which technically was like a U, Wii U title. So the rumor is that this is like the one built on the Switch for whatever that's worth. It's kind of the same as like the Super Smash Bros. thing. Except, I don't know. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be something yeah it, it'll I'm be sure something. it'll be a game it'll be a game for sure well that's that's a video game yeah, yeah it's a video game <laughs> stadia is down in the dumps blizzard is down in the dumps yeah, wonderful 101 i would like to play actually there's rumors that that's coming to switch and ps4 which that'd is be cool. sick yeah they should do that for dark souls only because it was souls. one of those games that stuck out to me when it came out on the wii u like i like yeah, the I colors too, and the yeah. box art and everything i think i i spoke to you at the time yeah. i think you said you picked it up and i, I don't did, remember yeah. if you played did you actually yeah. play it no i i remember I remember doing some research on it. I wanted to play it, so it would be cool to play it for the first time on the PS4 or even yeah, the Switch, would, yeah. right? That would I'm be okay sick. with all these games coming Me too. over, I especially love the ones on the Wii U, yeah. because yeah, especially those. Yeah. That fucking honestly, any good games fuck. were made on that, and they were left yeah. to die because yeah. not a lot of people bought Wii U's, right? That's a great way to fucking implement recurrent monetization. Yeah, honestly, right? if you ask me, you know. Because you're offering somebody an actual service, right? Like, it's not some fucking shit that they don't need to fucking trick them. It's like, here, it's a convenient way to play something that you used to play before. Like, yeah. thank you. I don't have to hook up my PS3 now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Take my money. No There's problem. There's value yeah. in that sense. Yeah. And plus, it looks nice on my shelf. Fuck you. I don't need another reason, yeah. you know? Like, I like that. Man, I, the other day, fucking put all my games in alphabetical order. That's fucked. And I moved home, and it fucking felt so good. Just That's looking fucked. at them after, and just like, yeah. You had enough shelves for all that? Yeah, I did. I'm at a cool seven right now, just vibing a little bit. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm pretty uh I'm pretty Dude. high, man. I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. It's a nice Saturday podcast. I'm cogent, just floaty, you know. Mm. My mind feels like control does. Mm. Just fucking hallucinatory. Fucking <laughs> love the levitating of uh, yeah, isn't that control. epic? Oh, it's so okay. dope. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah. It feels so good. Yeah. yeah. I wish you could Levitate ascend through levels though, and... while you were in the air. I don't like how you have to like start going down to go back up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep tapping. Like... Yeah. Just an ascend button and a descend yeah. button. Strangely enough, you want to know what game I loved flying in? Probably more than any other game I ever played. Fucking Kingdom Hearts. Really? The Peter Pan levels. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. You can fly in? I yeah. guess. Yeah. I know. Yeah. They did it well. They had a couple of levels where they had to have vertical and, hor- and huh. vertical movement, so they like figured it out pretty easy. They just had two buttons up and down, like fuck. You know? Yeah, that, I mean that makes yeah. sense. You don't have to touch the ground to go up. No, you just went up and down, so that was cool. Yeah, I'm uh, interested to play uh, Dragon Ball Z though for that reason too. I want to fly. You know? Flying, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, I never thought of that Kakarot though. Yeah. yeah, it's been patched up now, and it would probably be a good time to jump into it. Was it fucked or something? No, no, just that they. I just read that there was a patch to improve like loading times uh, and true, shit. True. So if you've been playing yeah. it for let's say a week or so, yeah, yeah, jump in now instead, and they yeah, patched yeah. it for faster loading times. That's sure, never a bad sure. thing, right? That's like the good side of this whole fucking release games and then yeah. patch them later like the connected online world that we live in that we yeah. i think we bitch about a lot but yeah this is like one of the benefits you get like yeah, they I did for so. bloodborne too 
where they the loading times yeah they uh patched loading times and made them just more optimized and faster yeah. that's nice shit but that's good we should one of us should play Kakarot at yeah, some point yeah we should for sure yeah it is it's good pretty good but like just what I said uh before that you, you get really like OP really quickly yeah you just level up and yeah I mean like I don't yeah. care about which that. I, I don't as well right like yeah. I personally don't give a fuck about it yeah, that's fucking... Another thing I heard, actually, this week was that they, uh, you know, in Death Stranding, when you go near BPs, it fucking stops you, oh, and there's that... Oh, that's right. Yeah. They fucking... They, they patched yeah, they it patched it, an yeah. option that you can yeah. switch yeah, you can it on or off. It, yeah. I probably wouldn't, even even if yeah. it bugs me, like, because it stops me for, like, it just to... Yeah, I kind of like it now. Get the whole experience yeah. of it, right? It's cool, right? There, there's a bit of utility to it, too, though, because then you don't get caught unaware, so they probably put it there because people were running right into a fucking massive yeah. dudes and losing all I mean, their the shit, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. That That is, like, the moment where you're, like, yeah. okay, you start crouching, and yeah. you go into stealth mode, and you're, yeah. like, I'm gonna fucking get yeah. around these guys yeah. or whatever. Yeah. If they just had an option to, like, let you keep walking and the thing to fucking happen, that would be nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would be cool too. Yeah. You can still control your character, but it's yeah. doing like yeah. cinematic yeah. camera. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, keep moving. Yeah, it was just jarring because you could be driving and like it would stop you. It would just stop. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh. yeah, just impedes you. And you're like, yeah, ah. yeah. I hate that feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. It's the feeling of being stuck in traffic or waiting in line somewhere. Oh boy, God, terrible. Fuck. Oh, uh, I wanted to mention as well that now you can become a patron of Green Dragon CVR. You can fucking support our video game counter-revolution involving fucking autotelic, fucking beautiful, self-justifying games. Hell yeah. That you buy physically and play alone. Yeah, you can give us money directly. Like Ion Fury. Yeah. yeah, so we're never going to have to fucking go, you know, beg people for it. We can keep saying whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> Shitty advertising yeah. down your throats. Yeah, check it out. GreenDragonCVR.com. Become a patron. Access our fucking weekly live stream of GUI Unleashed where uh, we'll play a patron selected game and fucking chat with you guys yeah you can also pay $40 a month if you're local to attend a fucking wicked party we're gonna have full of samples of uh, exclusive Ontario craft beers you can also of course hang out with us and you know that's always a that's always a plus yeah sure that's always a fucking you know, idiot. I would say it's always a great time but I'd be lying so yeah <laughs> guess <laughs> exactly. you're gonna have to figure it out for yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's exciting it's yeah great. we actually uh, put up a fair amount of shit on the site lately as well you know there's articles going up frequently i would say these days you know mm -hmm. our podcast is updated every tuesday around nine o'clock p.m yeah new episode goes up and stay tuned for that as well and we will have exclusive content for patrons so uh yeah absolutely if anybody gives a fuck and actually is listening to us we'd love to hear from you and uh yeah. you know what would you like thoughts and yeah, yeah exactly what would you like to hear me bitch about start the conversation yeah. and yeah let us know get things going start trashing on Forbes because fuck Forbes and shit yeah, Forbes, yeah. <laughs> Phil Spencer you know yeah yeah we need other things to trash on yeah it's just the way of the world you know yeah. need help keep all the good stuff right in front of us yeah man front yeah yeah center oh we could also um, you know I, I wanted to mention I started playing Resident Evil 7 as well that's, oh, fuck that's yeah. pretty cool that's been a pretty interesting experience a bit like, late out of the gate yeah, there very but, late out of the uh, gate. Yeah, I don't know why I put that one off for so long I guess that no. genre of games something I never really um it went through its, really its, it was before. down in the dumps for a while like you wouldn't yeah. have probably wanted to play five or six when they released because you're like eh. i did play five actually yeah but i always I felt a like uh, bit five too actually i always felt like seven was more in the genre of like fucking you know outlast and amnesia oh yeah yeah that's fair and fucking um what else is there in that genre you know what i'm uh, talking about like yeah Soma, like that first person horror genre yeah you know? I, I always felt like something really slightly different that. to me. I remember Fatal Frame on the fucking... Those are old games, though. Yeah, right? yeah, those are old for sure. I, yeah. I feel like those maybe are more like Resident Evil. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if that's really even a, a, a fucking objective distinction, but, like, something about those, like... Even the approach to horror that those first-person ones took was more like... I don't know. Resident Evil, while it's not like it's a joke, it seems more campy, right? Like, it yeah. seems more... I don't know how else to say it. It's campy. It's like got uh, fucking evil corporations and Wesker throwing his sunglasses around and like those little kids in fucking it's, costumes. It's always and shit. been like sort of that B movie yeah, type yeah, exactly. thing, right? Yeah, Where it's yeah. like yeah. it yeah. doesn't take itself fully yeah. seriously, yeah. like kind of, but not yeah, entirely. That's right, like, yeah. It's kind of jokey. Yeah, right? a little like, bit. Like it's not like you know, it's gross. Like there's scenes where you're like that's fucked, but it's yeah. not like you know, yeah, like psychologically the, the, horrifying, right? Like exactly. This one though, how you would characterize seven, right? You I know, guess like it's fucking tripping me out, dude. Up, it's fucked right? up. Like there's some parts where I'm like, not like surely yes for the sheer like disgusting nature of it, right? But also just like, but it's even fucking just the weird. Yeah, the relationship like, between yeah. the people yeah. is fucking weird. It's yeah. fucked. Eh? You're like, what is going on here? It's fucked, yeah. 
the back of the box says, yeah, unravel the mystery of the Baker Mansion. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I actually think that that's what this is about because I don't know what the fuck's going it's on. It's fucked, like, eh? Yeah, man. It's so weird. Like, Part of me wants to play it, but I uh, yeah. play on your PC wife, with like, headphones on. Your wife chops off your hand at the yeah. beginning of the game. You're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucked, man. And then you have to fight her while she's trying to chainsaw you. Yeah, and you're yeah. fucking bleeding to death. Oh, my God. And then some giant dude comes and fucking headbutts you and carries you to his house and fucking makes you eat body parts with his fucking family and the weirdest part that scared me the most was when like his wife is trying to stuff the weird body parts into your mouth and fucking you're not eating him and she's like Rah! she freaks out she's like i made she's it for like you laughing and you're not like eating a psycho it. oh no, she's my all god yeah like, this is weird man like it's making me uncomfortable it's unsettling yeah. right it's yeah. just oh <laughs> it's fucked yeah so there's that so i'm excited to play more <laughs> of that you know Last I left off, like, I just watched this poor police officer fucking get his head cut in half with a shovel. I remember seeing that clip. Yeah, that was unpleasant as fuck. Holy shit. You know? Yeah. So. It's grotesque, eh? Especially yeah. Especially being a somewhat modern game. Like, it looks yeah. good, right? It looks really good. Because <laughs> I think this is one of the first ones where they started to use that. I could be mistaken, but. The RE engine? Um, I think it's the RE engine. It is that called, engine, right? but they all, probably that's why it's called that, eh? Yeah. But it's also, uh fucking i think where they first started to use that photogrammetry technique where oh they, no yeah. shit that, i think okay. it could be i don't remember seeing a game before that employ that do you if you think i don't about know it what the earliest games of that would be like even something like final fantasy fucking 15 it's not photogrammetry the models I don't right i think it is no they're like traditionally made you know so this shit like guarantees that like and one thing i did find a little jarring though is that between the characters and the environments there's like a huge degree of difference like Oh yeah, it's insane the the amount of the level of some of the models look kind of flat, in. right? Or rather, the environments like the grass and the trees and like the walls and shit, but like the people look fucking horrifyingly real. It's fucked. I'm trying to find like if there's uh, any records of this, like what are the earliest games that used photogrammetry? photogrammetry but yeah. it's not easy actually. That's the first one that comes to mind, anyways. Look up the RE engine, see what the fuck. RE engine is the engine. It is the engine that was used for RE7. But was it made for that specifically, and then they started using it after? Uh, initially no. built for Resident Evil 7, okay, this yeah. is according to the wiki over here. Yep. The RE engine is a gaming engine developed by Capcom, initially built for Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. It has since appeared in several Capcom. Yeah, we know that. Um, Resident Evil 7... Uh, Devil May Cry 5 we knew that one 2 yeah. and 3 of Resident Evil now so yeah. Resident Evil 2 and 3 and the Resident Evil Resistance is that that multiplayer yeah I think so side title yeah. I think it's gonna be given away to people who buy the other one <laughs> the ones who buy 3 yeah from what I understand that's probably the best way to push that out sure why charge for it separately I don't know just like right. the 2000s yeah here play your fucking you be like if you're it's kind of appealing to both sides of you know yeah. people who want the single player experience and then people who want to have some kind of Either co-op or multiplayer. I don't think it'll be good, but I can't say for sure right now. But who knows? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it is interesting that it feels like to me like after that game came out, there was like this kind of weird like advent of really intense like looking First models pers- in oh, video okay. games. You know, uh, like, yeah. yeah. Like, but you're going somewhere else with that. But oh, yeah, you're it, right. Oh, that too though. Yes, I think that did. It bring did that genre start uh, to like sort like, of a first-person horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah Outlast. Sure. Yeah, Outlast w- was around. Amnesia was around, but Resident Evil like. Just like fucking, you know, some games are inspired by Souls. It feels like Resident Evil took that inspiration and, like, yeah. brought it to the mainstream. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, they, they kind of did. Yeah. Outlast is fairly popular now. They put it on Switch. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, right, it is. It's fucking... And two, a one and two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool, man. But, yeah, photogrammetry-wise, like, now you see games like Death Stranding, you know? Oh, and they look... They they almost look, you know, photorealistic. It looks yeah, it real. Is, like, yeah. it's... Yeah. We're at that point yeah. where how much better can it get, right? Like, it's yeah. fucked. Yeah. Yeah, There's got to really be improvements in, in other yeah. aspects like AI or something, right? I don't know. Animations. Like, yeah, so, like yeah. it's even the animations are almost taken care of because of the, yeah. the mocap stuff yeah. too, right? Yeah, so, animations were before photogrammetry even. They had pretty yeah, good animations exactly. back in the PS2 days. Yeah. You know? As long as they were using yeah. mocap and shit. Yeah. Like if you play The Last of Us on a PS3, yeah. you know, yeah, the graphics might not yeah. be up to par they're nowadays, good, but they're the animations good. are yeah. are right up there. You like, know what I fucking did play recently Final Fantasy 13 on the PS3, and it looks fucking amazing. Yeah, it looks amazing. I was it, thinking of playing one of those on the PC. Oh, they're good. Yeah, yeah you should. You should. <laughs> I think 13 is underrated. I yeah. played about half of it. It's really good. Yeah, yeah I want to finish it. That would be a great game to finish. And it's a trilogy too. It's I a love trilogy. That. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Usually I hate it when they like just milk a franchise, but like Final Fantasy, the universes they fucking 
contrived for each game are so like well it's not like each game is totally different right for the most part like there's obviously a lot of similarities that go with it being a final fantasy game but they build a new thing each time for the most part Mm -hmm. that's why like i feel like sometimes i would like to see more of each of those worlds you know i'm not bothered that yeah like you're okay with there being sequels right Yeah. yeah like yeah yeah it's interesting though that you were you were talking about Resident Evil before that you you jumped into seven. I want to say before I forgot, because there's there's been rumors sort of spiraling about Resident Evil eight lately. Eight, eh? Hey? What the yeah. hell is that going to be like? So assuming they go with the course they're going now, it'll be another first person and very fucked up, grotesque style, Shit, eh? rather than the B movie. Of the oh, earlier, buddy. like the remasters cool that are coming out, like, right? Dual structure where the remakes were like. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's then, that seems like what they're yeah, doing, right? I'm down for that. So the remakes will be like yeah. following that yeah. style. Wow. Think of how and fucking the, hard Capcom's rocking it now, eh? Capcom is in a, a very rocking. good place now yeah. compared to before, and compared yeah. to some other, you know, like Konami and, Who and in shit the like that. Who is making as many, uh, publishing as many good games as them? Like, I think there are companies publishing better games than them, frankly, like FromSoft and Kojima, right. in my opinion. But, like, but, the quality argument and yeah, good, yeah. like... They do make and quanti- some of the best... I mean, like, quantity and quality, yeah, sorry, yeah. For sure. I think it, you could make a good case for games like Monster Hunter World or fucking Resident Evil even being some of the best games of this gen, for sure. I would like, say they they're could, up they there, yeah. They could compete yeah. with the yeah. From games, for sure, right? Like, they're, they're fucking good games all around. I just prefer, like, the aesthetic and the tone, I think, of, like, Kojima or you know fucking right. Capcom games yeah. always have that campiness to them in my they, opinion they, right? they do yeah from Monster Hunter yeah. Resident Evil DMC yeah. is like you yeah. know yeah. serious but yeah. like joking yeah. at the same time yeah. <laughs> like cute. if you compare Konami yeah. fuck, or like excuse me Silent Hill to fucking Resident Evil right like the difference in tone is like extraordinary you know mm-hmm. one game is like this guy living out his fucking the fucking horror of having raped somebody or some shit like that right like what the fuck and resident evil is like oh wesker virus like, yeah yeah it's totally more lighthearted. but outbreak yeah i do love capcom though and i love their games yeah like, almost yeah, everyone Capcom's, I, uh, yeah. they're doing pretty cool there's one cool thing i remember from the early this gen where they showed that uh it was um it was just like a graphics uh, repre- uh, presentation sorry and it, it was uh, like a demonstration of uh, it was called deep down do you remember this at all I'll show it to you later. It was, uh, you have to see it, but it was apparently going to be a game, and then it was later either delayed or canceled, but it looked really good, and I, I wish we had a chance to see that, but I guess they've been busy. Mm-hmm. I think it was called Deep Down. It looked like more of like a, sort of like a Dark Souls type, like hmm. medieval-ish concept. Fuck, they also made Dragon's Dogma, now that you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking, they made Dragon's Dogma? That's fucking yeah. sick, too. That game was sick. Did they develop it and I think it was it? developed internally, yeah. Yeah? Me. Yeah. Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell, yeah. I never yeah. really played it, so I don't... Oh, it's kind of jank. It's yeah. in the best possible way. It's jank as fuck, actually. <laughs> it's fucking almost a disaster in some ways. It's hilariously, like, jank. It's like this super fucking Japanese take on, like, a medieval Europe <laughs> setting. It's <laughs> really? fucking so jank. Oh, my God. There's one part where you fucking, like, literally try to sleep with the king's wife, I'm pretty sure. Really? It's, yeah, it's hilarious. You have to walk this little girl around while she, like, tells you you're a piece of shit. It's really funny. Really funny game. Yeah, I've heard good things about them, actually. Yeah. That, Adriana that loved game that game. And, she yeah. played, like, hundreds of hours of Dragon's Dogma. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll fucking kick around in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot after, uh... That'd be a good idea. You know, after finishing some of these. What else? I want to beat Star Wars. I want to maybe get back into Death Stranding and put that away. I feel like it's a little daunting because I know there's still so much left. And, like, but, like, I want to do it because it's yeah. fucking sick. It's just... It's all consuming. It's a big time, right? it's a big yeah. time commitment. Yeah, it's time consuming. I yeah. feel like that's like Red Dead too. If you put it down, it's just over. Yeah, this yeah. is another thing, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I would love to finish Red Dead, but I know that's probably never going to happen. Yeah. It just didn't grab me the same way. Yeah. It Other did with me for do. a while, but then I burnt yeah. out. Yeah, I burnt out too. I fucking felt like kind of like I did when I started playing Far Cry 5, except Far Cry 5 was over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, days, you know? uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I fucking love those Far Cry games, man. That's another thing I want to replay. Far Cry games. Far yeah. Cry Primal, especially. That game was... F- man, if you want to just fucking have a great time... Play and, Primal? And, like, be super impressed by something, play Primal. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. I don't care what some stupid-ass journalist says, like, Oh, is the map Far Cry 4? I don't even fucking play Far Cry 4. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I don't give a fuck, yeah. you know? 
And at the end of the day, like, uh, you're like, yeah, I recognize that the crest of that ridge from yeah, my experience like, in the previous how game. How much does you know? it bother you? Oh my god, it gives a shit. If it's totally, yeah, sort of new surrounding. Like, I mean, I get that. What do they say? That it's the same map as Far Cry, the or same looks basic similar? terrain features. I mean, it's the same engine, I'm sure. I think 100%. they like took like the basic same. features of the geography, yeah. and like put details over them differently. You know, right? Making it a prehistoric setting and not fucking 20th Instead century of, Nepal or something right, like that, exactly. right? Yeah. Ah. Yep. That's just one of those, you know, grass, you gotta grab something and, and say something bad about yeah. a grasp of straws or whatever. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I guess I could understand, like, I don't like asset reuse either, but in this case, like, you're, is that a joke? Like, how many different games can be made in that same map and you wouldn't fucking. Yeah, to a certain degree, right? Yeah. But uh, the real cool thing was the way they managed to fucking... They reconstructed the Proto-Indo-European language. Which really? Is, yeah, they had university dudes do it, you know? Some Holy professors. Fuck. Which is a prehistoric language, the precursor to, like, Indian and all of our languages and Persian and fucking English oh. and, like, yeah. So it's pretty crazy. They told a crazy story about it. This fucking tribes, competing tribes of prehistoric people. And I was like, it was fucking impressive. There's drug trips in it. It's fucking fun. Really? Little details are hilarious. Like, if you walk around your village at night... Which, by the way, grows. You can, like, upgrade your village, you know? And no more way. people come, and you save different people, and they, like, expand your village. And it's sick. You're, you, like, your tribe is attacked, and you have to, like, regrow it, you know? Holy fuck. And you become, like, just a badass caveman overlord, you know? And go on drug <laughs> caveman trips. Caveman overlord. Yeah. Your shaman mixes you potions, and you fucking trip balls, and you gotta go kill these other three tribes. One of them are, like, cannibals. Some are, like, fire worshippers. Yeah, it's no crazy. Way. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful game. Yeah. Fuck, that's too bad. I've, I've never really, never really played it, but I've... I haven't heard much aside yeah. from you. I haven't really heard much yeah. about it. I did like three, but I fucking really love Far Cry Primal and Far Cry Five. Yeah, I played amazing. a bit of three, but yeah. I don't know five it's especially. Okay. Holy fuck, man! It's so fun and amazing, and the way like the world building really, really fucking. I dug it. Yeah, yeah. It was such a well conceived game, and it was like one of the few games I felt like you know they really understood like how to make the open world formula work for their game you know yeah they really like got they like to designed good, the whole yeah. game around that shit yeah like you literally progress and there's no like the structure is, is you're dropped into the fucking world there's like three territories each run by one of the main lieutenants of the bad guy there yeah. and you just got to go into their fucking territory and f fuck up shit until you until fill up they a come after big, you yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah events occur at those points yeah just like mafia three I love that fucking that that structure of games. I remember that from Crackdown One back on the Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh man, you're like, oh, this guy runs the cars of the gang. Go fucking fuck up around Just, shit. Yeah, until causing him shit yeah. until he comes after me. Yeah, and they take him down. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's they, pretty yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, sick. It's so cool. And I, as you fucking like clear that. out the zones, like more less enemies start appearing. People are happier. You know, they were there's like their a homes. shift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's nice. That's a really interesting. Uh, yeah. it's simple like, man. mechanic. Yeah, it's nice. It's so fun. Yeah. You could fucking have a bear. You can have a bear as your companion. Really? He just runs around with you. Yeah. And he, you know, you can send him stealthily to attack people. And it like, yeah, it's nice. There's hilarious characters making fun of everybody on every political spectrum, like dumb American guys. And oh, like yeah. Really hippie, like liberal guys. And it's just really funny. Yeah. Excellent game. Fuck. There's too much out there. Dude. Yeah, man. There oh is. My yeah. God. I would love to play that too. I wonder what's going to happen with Ubisoft if they're going to. Uh, I don't know. I heard they like delayed the release of a bunch of their games after the failure that was Breakpoint. Yeah, sure. They're going to rework everything. Yeah, I think Far Cry Five was a fairly successful game, and they haven't had one that successful since Far Cry Five. So why don't you just go back to doing what you did then? Maybe, maybe that's the maybe that's the call though. Who who knows? Like, what what the fuck could they possibly? Oh, man. oh, I read also fucking our buddy Blake Jorgensen, who I have in a quote in my fucking paper on the desk there, fucking complaining about single player games and nobody wants to play them and they're fucking bullshit. Like he had a press conference this week with EA investors where he told oh, them what an unexpected about success Star Wars Jedi yeah. Fallen Order was. Like you fucking idiot. That was some good shit to hear, eh? That that doesn't it fucking give you some happy. kind of cognitive so dissonance to just happy. be such a fucking a dumbass, so contrary to your own self? Yeah, like, yeah. Like everybody forgot what you said, you know. Was that him? That was him, right? It was Blake yeah. Jorgensen. Yeah, yeah. People don't want to play single player games anymore. And then, like, except for the ones who fucking supposedly years later, make hey, your game overperform. Wow, yeah. we made a single player game and it exceeded our expectations. Yeah. What's going on? Imagine what That's fucking people fuck. could have done without the influence of your terrible decision making skills. <laughs> yeah, Up right. Until this point, <laughs> you just, yeah. Imagine how much money they could have made you, you stupid just let bastard. Them be, you know? Yeah. <laughs> God, the industry's so funny, eh? So stupid. <laughs> the funny thing is Chasing that everybody trends, wants man. the same thing. Been you know what I mean? It's the same all the time. Yeah. 
It's chasing trends. Oh, this fucking game is popular. We gotta be after this. But thing is it's bad for everybody to do that right like yeah those guys want money and we want good games if they give yeah. us good make games they make money yeah you know it should be beneficial for everybody but they fucking think it's better to manipulate people into giving them money instead of just selling something that is good yeah that's the problem right well, not in all cases but in the ones that we're referring to certainly right like yeah. in every fucking massive failure that was an ea game such as anthem in the past fucking oh, anthem while, got fucking you know, dicked 2000 and, and literally what? practically every activision game until fucking Sekiro for the past ever like i can't think of one good one can you i don't know like i mean they always sell well relatively but like even like, like not good i think games. battlefront 2 was fucking destroyed online with bad publicity, bad press. And I think it underperformed, but it still sold in, like, the f- over 5, 6 million, maybe. Battle like too, like the Star Battle, Wars? That was the Star Wars one, oh, yeah. Because that one was fucking... That one was the one that was really heavily criticized online. Like, there was a whole fucking shit going on. They lost on. some money from that, from what I understand. That maybe, maybe that's the case. I mean, but at the same time, like, it still sold... I would love to, you know, I would to look into the figures of and how they stack up against like yeah. Jedi Fallen Order. I think uh, from what I understand, yeah, there was not. It's not like you know when you listen to YouTube, you think like, yeah, we really showed those guys. Like it didn't work. No, that way, yeah, of course, no, yeah. no, it never is but like it, that. Uh, it earned them like negative reputation with their business partners. Like there's that. That is that, true, but up until now, I've always thought that EA has been has had negative press forever, and they just seem to be immune to it. They didn't yeah, give yeah. a fuck, right? They're like, we're making money. I don't care. There was that whole thing that Disney called them and said. Hey boys, you gotta fucking clean up. Yeah, your act, smart you know? the fuck up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That that was because of Battlefront. Yeah. Because they lost they, a bit of stock points, you know. Yeah, because the loot boxes were aligning with you know, yeah, people online complaining about oh this is like child gambling and I mean that's all fucked yeah. up shit, right? Yeah, that's right. Disney was like, guys, we're yeah. gonna, we're gonna take this license away from you and give it to all the other. Imagine if it wasn't like an exclusive thing, and if they worked with multiple publishers and developers. To make yep. different types of Star Wars games, right? Rather than yeah, yeah, like Warhammer just EA. Sure. Yeah. Why the fuck not? Like that would be cool too, right? <clears throat> probably because somebody's getting that. paid something for that, you know. Yeah, EA probably paid Disney for the Star Wars license. That's fuck why. Probably yeah. yeah, and they have the money to do it. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Excuse me. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess. Right? But it's funny because just yet more validation of the fact that there's something of a counter-revolution underway in terms of how major publishers think about video game design, right? Like, yeah. it's becoming acceptable and perhaps even desirable for them to make good games. If there's, yeah, if there's one takeaway from last year, that, that yeah. is it, right? And we can only hope that continues. Like, yes. we, we hammer this to the fucking... But yeah. this is everything for yeah. us, right? This is what we want. At yeah. the end of the day, as yeah, gamers, what, want, what yeah. you know... And then they'll make money and everybody's happy again. Hey. Great. I'm happy to buy your shit, man. Fuck yeah. Love it. No problem. Give me more games. <laughs> Take my money. They're going to make uh, Jedi Fallen Order 2 and hopefully it's even fucking better. And now the rumor is that they're, what, rem- remaking KOTOR? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I heard that, but I don't know. Bioware? Did oh. they, like, get True. new designers or something since Anthem? Yeah, that, that does put a damper on the whole thing, eh? And they're redoing it specifically to bring it into line with the current Star Wars lore. I don't know. Man. Oh, is that what they said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, Jedi Fallen Order 2. <laughs> I definitely prefer Bioware's Star Wars lore to Disney's, the pre-Kathleen Kennedy Star Wars universe. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's fair to say, I think. Yeah. Pretty sure most people on Earth do, actually, if they know anything about it at all, I'm sure. Even children probably would. <laughs> My little cousins do, yeah. Yeah. Man, I went to see fucking Last Jedi with my little cousin the other year, and at this point, he was probably like eight. Yeah. And and he was like, that was a really bad movie. (laughs) You're like, wow. Yeah, that was a really bad movie. fucking knows. That was a bad movie. Oh, those kids are funny, man. I don't know if you just said that because we were saying it, but it was funny. I mean, even for like, I feel like episode one was... Everybody talks shit so much about episode one, but it's probably better than... And that was when we were kids. Like, we were his age, right? And I thought it was fucking probably way better than the ones that are coming out now. Like, uh, I don't want to talk about Star Wars. (laughs) Fucking... Yeah, let's leave that aside. Just going to leave that out. As always, thank Thank you you very, very very much for listening. Have an excellent fucking evening, friends. Yes. Take care. Enjoy. Drink lots of beers. Play lots of of fucking games. Stop by any time. Damn right. We're always here, sort of, kind of. We could be. Likely.